Hi, and uh, welcome back to the next season of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at uh, Myrick O'Connell. Um, there are 70 of us at Myrick O'Connell, and therefore everybody gets to do what they like. I do, not, I do nothing but elder law because I'm getting old, and I like dealing with people who are older. And, and, but this show is not about law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. Uh, if you've been to the presentations I do with the Senior Center, you know that Frank and Mary um, are, have three kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., and their goal is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you're Frank and Mary and you're living in Hudson, your goal probably is to stay right here um, for as long as you can and possibly until you die. And so the question that we're always asking ourselves in these shows is who are the people you need to know and what are the programs that you need to know about in order to do just that, in order to be able to just stay home, uh, um, or if you're not staying right at home, uh, being close to home um, uh, for the rest of your life. So uh, I have had Doug Peck on before as a guest because um, Doug is a, and Doug, thank you very much for being willing to yeah. come on this, uh, for, for uh, this show. Mm -hmm. And because Doug has been working now for a lot of years with a group called Seniors Helping Seniors, and I'd like him to talk to you about that because I have found this to be a unique, um, it's hard to call it a home care agency because it isn't like other home care agencies, mm -hmm. but I, I'd like to, Doug to talk to you about, to about that. And, and Doug, uh, talk about Seniors Helping Seniors and kind of what, you know, what all of that is about. And then maybe we can talk about, you know, kind of what is going on now, you know, mm -hmm. how, how you adapted to COVID when COVID was in now COVID is, you know, we, it, we, we, we thought back in July 4th that we put it in the rear view mirror, but it, it's feeling like it's catching back up to us, you know, right. and so maybe we can just kind of talk mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. So can you just kind of start off by talking about, you know, your involvement with Seniors Helping Seniors and, and, and what, what all of that is? Okay. Uh, yes, I've been involved with Seniors Helping Seniors since 2011. So it's actually been 10 years now uh, that I've been involved with it. I, it's a franchise. I own the franchise that was based out of Southboro and covered the, all of the Metro West uh, area. Mm -hmm. um, since then, in late 2017, I merged the franchise with our Boston area franchise, which is technically based in Waltham. So we now cover the greater Boston and uh, Metro West area. I see. Um, it's a unique business model. It's one of those ideas that uh, come along where you say, boy, I wish I had thought of that <laughs> because it's simple and it works so well. Um, the difference between our agency and other home care agencies is that we employ only seniors as our companions or our caregivers. And so they're not CNAs. We don't do personal care. We don't do medical care we address a couple of really important issues. One is socialization, uh, keep getting people out and back into the community again, or just having someone, you know, coming into their home or facility, if that's where they are, uh, and, you know, and being what I would call like a friendly neighbor with them. You know, someone you can talk to, someone who has had shared experiences uh, because of their age, uh, and, uh, you know, grown up in the same basic time frame as the people that we take care of. It just works so well that um, we, we have a lot of demand for our service now because the last year or two has isolated so many seniors. And loneliness is really a, a big health risk right now. It's almost as much health risk as going out you know, into the world. Um, but we've been very, very cautious at Seniors Helping Seniors. All of our uh, companions are vaccinated. And because we're dealing with just other seniors, they've all been vaccinated as well. And they tend to, to not get out very much anyway. They get out on occasion, they go out and mingle, but they're also very careful about what they do. So we've been very fortunate to be able to have a, a good stable group of folks uh, that 
I don't think anybody that's worked for the organization has contracted COVID. Right. So, so Doug, can you, for once again, for people who are hearing about this for the first time, and that you know that often happens. You, you know, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show because right. I think I, I've been, I do know a lot of people in Hudson. I do a lot of work in Hudson. I think, but I think this is a really important piece of kind of the mix if you're, if you are a senior in Hudson. So, can you talk a little bit about? who the people are who tend to be your clients okay. and also who the people are who tend to be your your workers cuz and we're right. not talking we're not talking about volunteers here you're talking about right. people who are actually who are, who are getting paid to, to provide these functions so right. could you could, and, and could you talk about each of those sure it 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 is a paid position it's a regular as we call w2 job people work anywhere between 10 and 12 hours a week up to uh, some work just about full time for us. Um, but um, they are folks that our age probably starts around 50 for us and goes yeah. on up. I've had people in their early 80s that have worked for us. So it, it's a wide uh, range of folks. Uh, they're not professional caregivers. When I started this business, I was not a professional caregiver. I don't, still don't consider myself a professional caregiver. Um, it's it's really a worthwhile job because you're you're giving back. You get really good feedback all the time. Our clients really really appreciate um, what we have to offer. Our clients are folks that uh, may be at home. My first, my very first client that I had was a woman in Natick who was 90 at the time. She lived with her daughter, but her daughter worked in Boston and didn't want to leave her 90 year old mother home alone all day. What do you right. do? You know, she had some memory issues. So we would take her out to lunch every day. So the daughter didn't worry about having to rush home at 6 30 7 o'clock at night and feed the mother who by that time was you know that's right. long past where she would want to have dinner right uh, and she was getting socialized she was getting out she loved to go out for riding in the car we took her all over the place and and uh we or we stayed at the house with her depending on what she wanted to do uh but she was she had somebody there for for three or four hours every day uh that was uh, the, her social activity. So, and, and, that, and that's probably like a really good example because you've mm -hmm. got a, you've got a person who is, I want to say, otherwise healthy. She has some mm -hmm. issues. She has some right. issues that 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 a lot of, of older people do. Maybe she had some memory issues, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, but but she was not driving, right? And and that's like one of the just. For people who grow, who have grown up in a suburban environment, you know, where and driving is everything, you know, to be not driving a lot of the. So I'm a person that loves driving. Right? Yeah, I just like driving. Yeah. I drive. I still drive. It's amazing. To, I still drive over twenty five thousand miles a year. I think wow. you know my my wife has a car that's eleven years old and she's driven. 75,000 and I have yeah. one that's like five years old and I've driven <laughs> 150,000 miles. Yeah. But I would, but I, but I know I would miss that. I just, mm -hmm. it's just the satisfaction of driving, you know? So to, to even to have that ability to just drive around uh, or to be, to be having somebody who can just come in, just to have somebody that you feel comfortable with, you know, right. just to talk to is just like a big, well, that's, that's a big deal. That's the other piece. And she's a good illustrator of what our, what our whole program is about. We had the same caregiver going back for uh, four, four years with her. Uh, yeah. We had actually two because they would switch off. Yeah. But so they, you go to the same person, you really get to know them. One of the other things that she loved was dogs. And she used to have dogs, but now she can't go out and walk the dog anymore. The daughter's not around. But one of my caregivers had two older dogs. She would bring them over. They would sit out in the backyard, throw the balls to the dogs. The dogs would be running around. She had a great time because she got to see uh, the dogs. Some days we'd go over. She wasn't feeling well. Again, she was in her early 90s. Um, she'd be laying on the couch. One of the dogs would get up and lay with her. You know, I mean, it was such a sweet thing to see. 
Uh, one of my caregivers worked, uh, volunteered at a place in Framingham called Eastleigh Farm. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a big farm uh, that has a lot of cows there. Well, uh, she was volunteering over there one day a week or one day every two weeks. She brought her over to the farm. Well, when you're 90, guess where you spent a lot of summers? At a farm, you know? So to her go over there, uh, she would help uh, feed the new calves. Just the whole smell of it, being in a barn again, brought back these really great memories. It was really a great uh, a great event for her. She just re remembered that. She just really loved going to the farm. The people over there got to know her as well. And uh, she, had a, she had a great time. Now, that's something that normally, you know, a traditional caregiver would never do. You know, right. you wouldn't even right. think about doing something like that or bringing your dogs over. So, you know, we, we, we do this as, um, there are so many instances like this, you know? So, so Doug, I, 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 you, I, and I think when people are hearing this, they are, it, it especially kind of rings true if you're a person who is alone. Right. right? But I, I remember you're once telling me about, I, so I'd like you to talk about people in two different circumstances. I okay. remember you're talking to me about a, a woman who was actually with, a, with her family and, mm -hmm. but it was the kids and the, and the, and the grandchildren and there, she was in the house, but it was just, their world was just kind of spinning around her. So she just yeah. really needed something. And then, you know, in, a, in an earlier show that you and I did, which, which is what I, one, one of the reasons I was interested in having you on, mm -hmm. you were talking about providing um, uh, caregiving actually in one of the area assisted living communities, which I right. never would have thought about. So can right. you talk about those, those two kind of situations? I can. Uh, the, the first one you talked about was actually a, a, a neighbor of mine. She lived in Southboro and one of the newer homes, beautiful home. She also had grown up and lived in Southboro, uh, but her husband had passed away and it, it didn't make sense for her to be living by herself uh, in this big house in Southboro. So she moved in with her son, uh, who at the time had two teenage boys uh, in the house. One was in middle school and one was in high school. So you know all the activities that they're involved with. So they're constantly on the go. Uh, the wife had a big professional job. She was out most of the time. And he was working, um, he was self-employed and working at home. I, I would go into, into the house and it was really pretty chaotic, but she was there, um, but as you said, what she really was alone because everybody else was so involved with what was going on. We brought two, I brought two caregivers in. One lived in Ashland, one actually lived in Southboro. Um, the biggest thing was it, it was coming around the one year anniversary of her husband's passing. Uh, and she was, you know, feeling pretty lonely and pretty depressed. Right. It turns out both of the people that I brought over were widows themselves. So, for the first time, she had somebody to talk to what about what she was going through. You know, this is the first year anniversary, uh, what it was like to be, you know, to have him pass after all the years. And both of these women could appreciate it. They'd gone through the whole process before. They became very, they came, became very close. Uh, one was very Catholic. She was very Catholic. Uh, and so they would sit and listen to mass together, uh, you know, uh, one or two days a week. Um, and it was just a really great way. She got so close to them and felt very much more, um, not as lonely. Right. Uh, she had been uh, seeing a, a Jerry psych person, had been on antidepressants for this. And after just a month or so, they cut those way back. Uh, the the drugs needed uh, because she just felt you know a part of something. She had somebody to talk to who had actually gone through it. And now you know if you think about it, you you really can't talk to your kids about what you're going through as a no. widow. You know, uh, so it was it was very hard for her because she was isolated. She was there in a beautiful place, but she really felt lonely and very isolated. And now on the other side of that. Talk about the folks that you see who are in, we were talking about folks who that you see among other places like New Horizons, which is close, you know, many people in Southboro are aware of New Horizons, right. 
which I think is, I've always told people, you know, if you're seeing assisted livings, among others, you have to see New Horizons. It's, right. just, it's the oldest one in the area, and, and it's just a really terrific model. It, it right? is it is a nice facility. But it's big. I mean, when we were just talking to the director, right. she was saying there were 400 people there. That's a that's a lot of people, right? It is a lot of people. And they, so they, I wouldn't they, think you'd like a wonderful school. job. I actually have one client that I still see there uh, right now. Yes. Uh, and um, it's a good example. Her daughter is still working and lives in Manhattan. And she's the only really living uh, relative. And yeah. she's up here. And so I take her to a lot of doctors and dentist appointment. She's pretty hard of hearing. So I'm often in there with the doctor or the, or the dentist explaining things to her. You know, we've been doing it now for a number of months. I know all our doctors. I know her. I can talk to her about this is what the doctor recommends. This is what he's saying, uh, et cetera. Uh, but two other things happen. One is we often go out for coffee afterwards. So we're sitting outside. We go to the Law Shoe uh, yeah. in Marlboro. Uh, and the first time is I did it. Is that for coffee or for a beer, Doug? We, we, we only go for coffee. You only go for coffee. <laughs> but, um, it was a little chilly up. They have a nice little fire pit that we, that we sit out there. But she said to me, she says, you know, it's so nice just to be normal again, just to sit with somebody and have a cup of coffee, you know, and just talk about things in general, right. you know, it's and to get outside the fresh air. So, you know, it, it's something I look forward to. Uh, she's still a big reader. So I would bring her over some books. Uh, we would talk about books. Um, I'm actually now in the process of uh, the daughter's going to buy her a Kindle. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to show her how to be able to use the Kindle, download books, et cetera, because she is a pretty voracious uh, right. a reader. Uh, in talking to her as well, she has a hard time on the phone, but it's the only way she can communicate with her daughter because, you know, the daughter calls all the time, but she has a hard time on the phone. Right. So because I'm involved with so many different people in the senior care community, I put them in touch with a free service called Caption Call that uh, it will now, you can see what the person is saying on your phone and respond back. Uh, and again, it's a free service from the government. And um, she just told me the other day, it's the best thing for her because now she can talk on the phone with her daughter really catch everything that she's saying because right. she can read it. Uh, so again, it's just another, you know, way we interact with people who are either at home or in their, or, or in any of the uh, either independent or assisted living facilities. Now, Doug, you're describing this and I'm saying to myself, boy, if I were looking for somebody, I want Doug Peck, right? Mm -hmm. So, cause it kind of goes back to an earlier question. So, right. So tell me about the people, like what, the people who are who are working there now, right? Mm -hmm. And whom you, because uh, to some right. extent, the people you'd want. So the people who are working there, like what did they do before? What what is is there a kind of a common denominator as to who who shows think, up? Are they all like you? You know, I mean, that, <laughs> right? I think they're all what I would call uh, people persons, mm -hmm. and. We also look for what we call sort of the heart of a volunteer. A lot of them have volunteered. They volunteer at their place of worship. They volunteer at schools. They do other things, but they like being out and they like helping people. They could be uh, former salespeople. Uh, we've had people that have worked in retail. We've had nurses. We've had people, I'm telling you, from every kind of walk of life. But right now, they're looking to they're not ready to sort of just completely retire. They want to get out. They feel that they still have something to give. And by giving, you know, we talk about people who are lonely in facilities or even at home, but a lot of times people who are still relatively active in their late fifties, early sixties, yeah. if they're no longer working full time have lost their social network. Right. So by going out and working, at, you know, with other people, it gives them a reason to get up in the morning, to get dressed, to put on sort of a happy face, to go out there and help somebody else. It's really very rewarding for them 
and they become part of our community. We right now have about 140 people that work for us. And so we do a lot of things. We have book clubs. We have movie nights. We do a lot of things. So the you do a lot just, just us, among the just among the employees. Just among the employees, you know, now have a whole new social network, again of sort of like-minded people. They might come from different, you know, backgrounds and experiences. Yeah. Some are living in the city. Some are living in the suburbs. But the commonality is that they they enjoy the work that they do. They enjoy helping other people and other seniors in particular. And I suppose if, if they're if involved in that big a network, once mm-hmm. again, I'm thinking of it from the, from the, you'd like to see some more people, right? Yeah. From, from that perspective, it's really, it's also making them better at doing what they're doing because you're, I'm sure that you're constantly hearing right. the stories, the good stories, the bad stories, you know, in, inevitably there are some bad stories, you know, yeah. about, about how, or, or just different situations and how, mm-hmm. how you can react, the different options for reacting to different situations, right? We have a great team of people in the office that, you know, we have, we have seen so many clients, hundreds of clients now over the years that we sort of have a pretty good uh, answers to just about any situation, you know, can really be able to advise families and help them along because it, it really does take a village you know, when you're, when you're trying to take care of somebody who is, who is older. I mean, that's how I started when my father passed. Um, I was the closest uh, and oldest to, uh, you know, to her. She wanted to stay at home as long as she could. And so for four years, it was doctor's appointments. It was, you know, finding people to mow the lawn and to shovel the driveway. And I mean, you know, the list goes on. So I know firsthand how, how complicated, uh, you know, it can become for folks to do it. And the key is don't do it alone, <laughs> you know, uh, and you can you can start small in any situation. Uh, one of my longest term clients, we started one day a week, two hours a day. She was very reluctant to have someone come into her home. But because we really try hard to find a good match, bringing somebody in that's going to be a good match for the personalities involved, um, uh, she ended up staying at home for a long time, but we were doing 24 seven with her after a few years because of her, of her health. And in this case, it was her mental health that had deteriorated, right? She was right. physically still fairly good, but she just couldn't stay home alone anymore. It was too much of a danger for her to do that. And we kept her that way for probably over two years until she moved in, moved away with her daughter, uh, in another state. Right. You know, but, and I suppose in that kind of situation, it had it, I mean, you, you never know, but had it not been for the, the senior helping seniors person there, right. That whole thing might've broken down much more quickly. If much she, more quickly. She didn't, because if you don't have that confidence in the people who are coming in, if you, and right. so you're just imagining, oh my God, what, you know, you're thinking all, all the bad things that could mm-hmm. be happening, you know, if there's somebody coming in and how is that all going to work out? She probably just would have rejected that, right? right? Whereas so, this gave her this gave her this kind of a, like a like a runway to to yeah living an an additional two years in her home, which I'm sure she liked, right? right? Absolutely. And you know everybody gets medical complications. I mean, I I had a you know clients that have had knee replacements or hip replacements, so we're there to help them. We work closely with PT people and OT people. Again, we're not the experts, but we can. You know, no one likes to exercise alone, right? So if you if you have your PT exercises, our folks will do them with you. You know, they'll say, okay, it's time to, you know, do your chair right. exercises, right. get up, get down. Most people don't even like to go out and walk alone. And walking, as we know, is a really good exercise for seniors, but yeah. people are afraid to fall. Um, I had a client at a beautiful facility that had beautiful pathways uh, it's at uh, Overwork Cushing Hospital is in Framingham. It's a beautiful mm-hmm. park there. But she was on a walker and wouldn't go out because she was afraid if she fell, who would know? So we would just take her out for walks every day, sit on the bench, walk some more. I mean, it was a great exercise for her. Fresh air when we could, when we could do it. Um, 
and it it really helped her assimilate into the community. Right. You know? So yeah. there's, there's so a I lot guess we can do. There's a lot that you can do, and so I guess Doug, what I what I, I would really appreciate, and for the folks who are watching, I'm going to ask. I'm asking Doug. Mm -hmm. You know, to get his contact information to the folks at uh, at HUD TV. Okay. So, you know, so if you if you've got any questions, you should talk both on both sides. If you think right. that you think that this might be worthwhile for you, right? Mm -hmm. Or or for one, or for your mother or your father or whoever, right? Or right. if you feel that you have the time and mm -hmm. have an interest in this, and you look at Doug Peck and you say, "Yeah, I'm kind of like him," you know, mm -hmm. I would I would you know I could really I could really enjoy this, right? Yeah. Because I always, you know, whenever I'm talking to seniors, I say, you know, that the a crucial piece of being a senior is that we have to be helping each other out here, right? We do. Because right, because right, because inevitably we we may be needing services later on. So it's mm -hmm. really important that we kind of evolve this network mm -hmm. that can help others and then ultimately can help us. And interestingly, I think seniors helping seniors is the one kind of home care quote unquote entity that is a vehicle for doing that because it's right. getting seniors really involved. So, so Doug, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you doing Thanks this. Thanks for having yeah. me out there. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And we are actively hiring and we're in this, we're in the Metro West area, keep you close to home. Uh, and it really is nice to be able to help, you know, uh, what I consider to be a, a, a neighbor, somebody in your close community, right. you know, stay independent and stay and stay healthy. Right. It's it's great. So so Doug, thank you very much, folks. If yeah. you enjoyed it, I hope you enjoy the show. Contact these people, not when it's an emergency. Well, I mean right. you can, but try to contact them so that you know that this is a resource that's available to you. Right. That it's available to you. So thank you for watching. Uh we look yeah. forward to seeing you uh next month in the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks,